flight testing. <laughs> okay, whoops, sorry for that technical difficulties. I think we're back. Um, yeah, I think we're back. Oh, okay, yes, confirmed back. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, <laughs> it's a good thing we only have, like, it looks like there's three viewers currently. Um, <laughs> good thing. Good thing I didn't embarrass myself in front of more people. <laughs> All right, so so sound off in the comments if you're here, um, because uh, I'll, I need to know who's gonna participate in our <laughs> in our um, our trivia game. We're gonna start in a second, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna re restate that this is gonna be a, like the animal themed um, first Friday for like uh, first Friday stream in conjunction with uh, the the first Fr the vi the virtual first Friday stuff we'll be doing with the the craft council uh, to this tonight <laughs> at six thirty. So um, I'm so off my flow now. Okay, so yeah, so I'm wearing a a cow T-shirt and the. I don't know if I've shown this cuff yet, but it's, I realized I don't have, like, any animal stuff in my house, which is, like, really weird. <laughs> I'm a big animal lover. But I'll be showing off, um, today for my personal collection, this is a beautiful cup, um, from Sugar Jaws Pottery, which is a collaboration with Grace Tessin and Dennis Ritter. Um, it's hand-built, uh... It's, I, it's like one of the few hand-built things that has a seam that I'm like into the seam. Um, only because like they didn't try to, like, like it wasn't like a half-hiding job. Like I think the way it, it's, it's built and how it like folds over like that, um, inside the cup is very, obviously very intentional and I think it really, uh, it paid off. I also love that it's terracotta. The bottom is not completely, um it's not completely flat so it does have kind of like a nice illusionary um when it's sitting on the table and of course that's an amazingly illustrated tortoise on here um I'm not sure exactly what kind of tortoise it is but if I was gonna guess it would be a, a cicada desert tortoise oh um hi Leslie and, and Chuck thanks for thanks for joining you missed the thankfully you missed the um technical difficulties so that's good <laughs> Also, if you're joining in late, make sure, um, well, I guess you're not going to hear this until later, make sure that you, like, are, um, like, skipped ahead in current so that we, that you don't miss out on the trivia questions. <laughs> so, um, before we start, I did want to let everyone know that we will be doing a virtual First Friday, uh, this, this, well, tonight. I think it involve it's going to involve... Um, there's a, a cocktail recipe that was put out by the, the craft council. Uh, we are doing, well, we're going to be, we're going to be having a, a discussion with, uh, Clarissa Eck, who you might know as one of our work exchange who makes beautiful, like, I mean, they're just fantastic. Um, beautiful, uh, graffito wheel thrown pieces so usually I mean I have a few of hers that are like black painted on top and then scratching through to the white and I think they're fantastic so we're going to be having like a, a interview with her which is really going to be very cool uh there's also a May Day cocktail that was uh given out by the craft now um people so so I think all of this stuff is on their website, and I think we sent something out already. Maybe we haven't yet. But uh, also, there uh, the Center for Art and Wood is going to be doing like um, I don't know if it's I wasn't completely sure, but I, they're definitely presenting some like they have their virtual opening. Uh, the the Museum of Art is going to be uh, working with artist uh, Roberto Lugo, who you you know he should probably know. Uh, and the Wharton Escherich Museum is going to also be doing something. So it's, it's going to be really fun. Um, our opening for, for First Friday is, um, 
Ooh, I'm blanking on the name. Give me a second. I definitely know it. Um. <laughs> it well, I mean, it's animal based. <laughs> uh. Hmm. What is the name of the sh any Karen? Do you know the name of the show? <laughs> Ooh, hi, Megan. Yeah, M Megan said that she's got her, um, g got a Clarissa mug. It is amazing. I mean, I think they're just great. Um, I love her, the rabbits that she carves. I think they're pretty nice. <laughs> I'm really into them. So, so yeah, so that's happening. Um, and so I thought, you know, to, to coordinate with with our our opening with all the, the animals um, that we would play some animal trivia so the way this is gonna work is I know I'm on a on a like a, a delay with you guys so I'm gonna be asking a question um, and then the first person who answers correctly in the oh animals all around us thank you Karen the first person who answers correctly in the chat um, is going to get like a point um, <laughs> and then, and then when, um, at the, when all said and done, by the end of the stream, we'll know who won Animal Trivia, and, um, they will get a prize, which I will announce when we have a winner. Um, so, also, Google will be allowed for this, so it's just, who's ever going to be the quickest on the draw, I, I was making these questions, I thought, oh, these are good and interesting, and then I realized they might be a little intense. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it is trivia, but, um, <laughs> I realize not everyone has a penchant for collecting strange facts as much as I do, so, um, also, if you don't want to participate, if, I mean, you should at least guess, because why not, you know, you could win something, but, um, you're at least going to learn some interesting facts about, <laughs> about different animals, so I'm going to start with, uh, my first question, I have, like, them written down in a... <laughs> <laughs> that's why I keep looking down so this first the first um, this is like a fill in the blank uh, question so the Indus River dolphin is unique not only because it is one of four freshwater dolphin species it is also the only dolphin that cannot blank so what can this dolphin not do that all other dolphins can do um, I'll give you guys like I don't know 45 seconds to to make a guess um while we're talking I'll talk about more about the Indus River Dolphin so uh they live in Pakistan they are also endangered uh they're they're a freshwater dolphin which is pretty interesting um so that means they they live in a like a river system uh so Chuck Morris just said talk. So, uh, nope. Yeah, so that is incorrect. Swim backwards? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, yeah, um, well, they might not be able to swim backwards because, um, because they're in the river, but that's not uh, right. <laughs> Karen said eat cupcakes. I don't think any, any dolphin can do that, so that's not unique to just the Indus River dolphin. Um, Leslie Lovick says, can we cheat? Absolutely. Go ahead and use Google. Um, so I, they're also, I, not their full, I didn't give you their full name because they're often called the something in this river dolphin, so that's the, that's the answer is, <laughs> um, I'll give you guys a hint, it is a, live in salt water, no, Emma, there are other dolphins that can't live in salt water, including ones in Amazon, um, give me a hint, it's a sense. <laughs> I think it is cute when they swim backwards, though. They also live in very brackish, um, they live in very brackish, cloudy water, uh, so they hunt solely with echolocation, um, because, because the other, another sense that they would use to hunt is useless, um, because of how, how, like, cloudy the water is. <laughs> You guys' guesses are wild. <laughs> they they swim on their sides? I yeah, well sometimes. For sure. 
But what can they what can they not do that every other dolphin can do? <laughs> they can't see. Chuck wins. Chuck wins a point. Ding ding ding. I'm gonna type ding 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 in the comments. Uh yeah, so they they don't have um they don't have le like uh lenses on their eyes. So uh, the way we think of sight, like being able to see colors and shapes and everything, they can't. They can only sense light and dark. So they know when it's daytime and nighttime, but nothing else. Um, all right, this one, this was actually in the in the news, um, not recently, but it was in the news. So you might have read about it a couple years ago. Um, the oldest living animal was Ming. Was Ming a 507 year old clam? Ironically, it died when scientists tried to blank. <laughs> this is a very... <laughs> this is a little bit of a morbid question, but um, it's one of, like... I don't know. I find it very, very ironic. It's, like, funny in a bad way. <laughs> Yeah, Ming the Clam was also, um, it's a Norwegian clam that lived in China. Emma said open it, um, we're gonna say, we're gonna say that, um, the judges are gonna accept that because, um, uh, the judges are gonna accept open it because they were trying to figure out how old it was, so they opened it up <laughs> to see how old it was and they ended up killing it in the <laughs> In the process of trying to date it. So, whoops. <laughs> okay, so those two were really hard, so I'm going to give you guys an easy one. This is a true or false. Uh, so, true or false, there are male, or no, true or false, there are female peacocks. True or false. I have a 50% chance to get this right. Ooh, Karen, sorry. <laughs> I accepted Emma's answer, but yes, Karen, you're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Emma outraged about about. I'm sorry. I'm reading these li like I'm in in the back. Um. All right, Karen. Do you Karen and Leslie? Do you want to answer? True or false? There are female peacocks. We have three people. So Emma was the first to to jump in with a true. Anyone, anyone want to challenge that? <laughs> I'll give you guys like another 15 seconds in case anyone else wants to put in an answer. Maybe the fact that I'm hemming and hawing and not saying anything might be a indication of whether or not the true part is true or not. <laughs> Emma. All right, Emma, I'm not giving you that one because you already answered and you could have, like, you know, you could write true and then just false right after it and one of them would be right. So I'm going to give it to Karen. Yes, false. There's no such thing as a, a peacock, a female peacock, uh, would be called a, a pea hen because they're hens, not cocks. <laughs> oh, Emma. <laughs> it's okay, Emma, you can't win them all. So right now we have a leaderboard of, um... Chuck with one point, Emma with one point, and Karen with one point. So we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, you <laughs> if you guys, um, if you guys, like, if someone can get this without Googling it, that's going to be wild. Alright. Although it looks more like a deer crossed with a zebra, this animal is the closest living relative to the giraffe. <laughs> Emma's calling technicalities on the last one. Oh well. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, although it looks more like a deer crossed with a zebra, this animal is the closest living relative to giraffe. I, in my personal opinion, they're also very cute. So they live in the um in the forests of Africa. Oh, Kofi! Oh, Chuck! Boom! He gets it. So Chuck's got two points now. I'm gonna. <laughs> I like. Chuck with a second Okafee. Yes, you're right. 
Um, yeah, so check it, so check that two points, we got Emma with one and Karen with one. Alright, this is a, the, the, I love knowing the group, like, names for groups of animals, so this is one of those questions. Also, I want you to know, I wrote these all myself. <laughs> so geese gather in a gaggle, while crows move in a murder. Eagles converge in a blank. Oh, okay. Megan says she googled the okapi. Yeah, they are wild. I think they're very, very cute. And those stripes in the back are to help them blend in with the foliage to, like, break up their silhouette. Um, that's why they have them. But they do have, like, a little zebra butt. So, geese gather in a gaggle. Crows move in a murder. Eagles converge in a... Megan's guessing stadium. So... <laughs> Fun fact, there is, if you're, like, a t uh, someone who likes to learn, like, test-taking rules and how to make it, um, like, how, how to make it easier to take tests and all that, um, you might notice that g gather and gaggle move in a murder, so they converge in a... Oh, wait, I just got the joke, dang it! <laughs> I'm sorry, so, um, dang it, <laughs> making you get the point for the joke, honestly, and for me missing it, um, a cluster, a crook, no, uh, well, crook is close, I'll say crook is close, Chuck, um, it is a, a, a body of government, oh, that's your hint. Emma, if you Google the answer, I said Google's on the table. You can use your Google answer. <laughs> there's actually two correct. I'll accept there's two different correct answers for this one. In a Congress, Jay Z coming in with a <laughs> coming out of nowhere with a, the right answer. Yeah. So um, eagles m converge in a Congress or a convocation. It's also what it's called. So. Um, Jennifer, oh, she swooped in before Chuck, so, <laughs> so now we're at Chuck with two, Emma with one, uh, Karen's got one point, and Jennifer Williams got one point. Alright, <laughs> so here's, we're, um, oh man, I don't want to give you guys another easy one yet. Alright, so clownfish live in schools with a dominant male and female. If the female dies... The dominant male will blank. <laughs> oh man, wait. Oh, Emma. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Emma's very competitive. Alright, Chuck's at, Chuck's at two, Emma's at two, uh, Karen's at one, and JC, you got your point, sorry. <laughs> Turn into a female. Jay-Z, that is correct. So, Jay-Z's back on the board with one point. Yes, so, <laughs> uh, if the, if the fe dominant female dies defending the nest, um, the male clownfish will turn into a, a, the new dominant female in the school, which has some serious, um, implications for Finding Nemo and what's going on with Marlin. So, <laughs> think about that. <laughs> um... Maybe they should have a, a, a third, um, <laughs> maybe there should be a third, um, Finding Nemo, uh, spinoff that is Finding Marlin, where Marlin finds himself. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, <laughs> the next question. This is an easy one. This is a gimme. This marine mammal is sometimes called a sea cow. Oh, Emma was so mad she didn't hear the current question. I'm sorry, Emma. So this marine mammal is sometimes called a sea cow. Um, they also will graze. They're called sea cows, A, because they're docile. B because oh there's <laughs> there's a there's Emma with the wind yes manatee um they're very docile and they also kind of like 
graze um, on the ocean floor on seaweed. So that's that's very cute, if you ask me. I love sea cows or manatees. Yes, Leslie, you're right. But and Chuck, but Emma is really fast on the draw. Emma's like trying to win this. <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm just making sure I record everyone who, who got a right answer. Alright, so this, okay, so here, this is a wild one. What South American ant species has a global mega colony with individuals on every continent except Antarctica? So this is a, it's one ant species. That has global. They started in South Africa. They have gone global. Um, they have ant colonies, sister colonies on every single continent. And the thing is, like, if you took an individual from Europe and um, placed it in like America or Asia, um, and it found another from a different colony, they are they are cooperative and they will work together. So these are all like it's essentially one giant colony of ants. <laughs> Emma, I, I don't know are the questions wild or is the competition wild Emma <laughs> so this South American ant species has a global mega colony they are everywhere so mostly um uh, brought so and they've also learned how to like adapt to the cold and stuff like that but somehow have not genetically diverged enough um Chuck and Megan are saying fire ants. That yeah, that counts as a species, but no, that is not the correct species. Actually, fire ants are starting to um come up in the world and try to challenge this other global mega colony. However, fire ants are not as widespread as this ant who started a long time ago. Uh JC says carpenter ants. Uh no. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you a hint. This ant has... I don't think picnic or sugar ants are like a species of ant, Emma, even a common name for a species of ant. This ant's um, name has a country in it. So, and it's a South American country, so there's only so many guesses. <laughs> yeah, but so there's a, currently a World War ant going on right now uh, between the fire ants and this other... South American uh, colony, and when they're when they were in, um, when when they're in their like natural jungle habitat, you know, like the wars were waged and all that, but it's like kind of equal. But now that they're spread across like urban environments and there's the cold and everything, like they're going, they're going everywhere. JB says I'm kind of scared of fire ants. Ah, uh, you should be. They will eat a baby like straight up. <laughs> You should be very afraid of fire ants. Um, I'm also gonna just double check. <laughs> Jay Z with the meta with a meta strategy. I'm just starting to list all all South American countries. I like it. So Chilean ants is not correct. Um, you can keep going. Anyone can jump in. <laughs> I like this. I like, um... I like the metagaming. These guys are less stingy, also, than fire ants, so that's good. I was just double checking. Oh, Argentine ants! Yes, Emma gets the point! I'm gonna... Just let her know. <laughs> Brazilian ants. I like that one too. Yeah, so it's the Argentine ant, ant and they're, they're currently fighting the mega colony and beating back the mega colony of fire ants, actually. Um, so who knows? Alright, so we'll do another true or false. <laughs> we'll do another true or false question. Um, and then I've got a real, a real wild one. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, the chat is just so funny. Uh, true or false, isopods are the only land-exclusive crustacean. So is that tr a true statement or a false st 
statement. Isopods, also known as uh, pill bugs or roly polies, um, are the only land exclusive crustacean. So I'm gonna say for true and false, you can only have one answer. You can't change your answer. So the first one to put in the right answer wins. Um, Jay Z voting false. Anyone can can uh, challenge that. Megan, that is right. It is true. Or tour. I'll accept her. Um, yeah. So they're the only land exclusive isopod. Um, so like any other, even like hermit crabs or things like that need brackish water to live and, and, and breed in. So they can't, they have to go back into the water to breed. So even like a, what you would imagine a land-based crab would be, like a fiddler crab or... Um, an armadillo is not a crustacean. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> Alright, so, this is my last question for you guys. Um, and you're gonna have to know a little bit extra. <laughs> this is gonna be a little extra. So, the tiger keelback is a very special snake. Oh, Leslie says bye. Bye, Leslie. <laughs> this is our last question. The tiger keelback is a very special snake. Like many snakes, it has venom to subdue its prey. Unlike any other snake, it defends itself with... So what does the tiger keelback defend itself with that no other snake defends itself with? Um... It's like one of those things that if you have a herpetologist friend and you call snakes the like a venomous snake the wrong thing they would like get all up in your grill about it um but if you um ooh Jennifer's willing says spikes that's wild um I think some um some vipers have kind of like uh eye ridge eye eyebrow ridges that are kind of spikes yeah keelback is spelled exactly like that yeah so it's um I'll type it. <laughs> Chuck with the emo emoticons. So yeah, they do not use um they do not use spikes uh to defend themselves. They're actually a pretty smooth looking snake. Um also the way we found out that this um that about this defense mechanism was a scientist was um <laughs> a scientist was dissecting one and didn't have the proper eye shields on and injured themselves um because of it i'll give everyone uh so when the clock i'm gonna call this one a wash um when the clock turns to jennifer's willing says they get their venom from poisonous toads that they eat that is true so um venom is used though for for offense typically and it's injected into a bloodstream so um what do they use for defense though i'm gonna say when the the clock strikes 232 i'm going i'm just gonna call it <laughs> um they do not squirt their venom so there are some um they can't actually because they have rear uh fangs in the back of their back of the mouth they don't have front fangs like a cobra uh, so there are spitting cobras out there um unless you're saying that they squirt something else somewhere else on their body maybe uh you could you're like on the right path and you've definitely said the right you've definitely text like typed out the right word jay-z you're so close <laughs> Okay, so it's 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 two thirty two. I said I would um stop it here. So if someone says it before I say it out loud, if you type it, um I'll accept it. But Emma says their neck, you guys are so close. They have poison. So there's no other snake that is poisonous. Snakes are general are venomous. Um poison is so venom is injected into your um bloodstream and that's how it atta like attacks your nervous system um snakes are are typically venomous this however um this species of snake 
gets a po- takes the poisons from the toads that they eat and stores it in the back of their neck. So if you were to bite down or apply enough pressure to the back of their neck, they would explode um, poison into you. If that gets into your eyes or you ingest it, that's how that hurts you. So so poison is almost always a defense mechanism. They wouldn't you can't really hunt with it. <laughs> Emma's complaining about the nuance of my question, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Alas, you have to deal with it. I am the game master. <laughs> yeah, so, um... Yeah, so... So, <laughs> so, that's the only poisonous snake. So, if you have a friend who's a herpetologist, and you say, uh, uh, you know, the tiger keelback is a poisonous snake, and they say, no, it's not, it's venomous, you can say, actually, it is poisonous. It has poison as a defense mechanism. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to double check. I kind of scribbled down who answered what right. So it looks like Chuck had uh, one, two. Chuck was the first to get two right. Uh, Emma answered four right. Karen got one, Jay-Z got one, and... Megan got one. So, Emma, you're a winner. Oh, bye, Jay-Z. Um, yeah, I, I talked about it, um, about First Friday. Yeah, so anyone who's talking to me right now better come to First Friday, too. So, <laughs> alright, so Emma's our winner. Emma, your prize is a pet portrait, um, of Pebbles, I guess. <laughs> so send me a picture, and I will draw you a pet portrait. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you have um any special requests, like if you wanted to be wearing like a special outfit or something, let me know. I will make it happen. Um, you can talk to Megan about my prowess in turning animals into farmers. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so congratulations. That's your prize. Uh, does so we we've officially gone over by five minutes because I did not. I did not plan out that well, or maybe I gave you guys too long to guess. But, uh, so, we'll stay on for, I'm gonna type into the chat real quick my question. Uh, just because, <laughs> Megan, some of the best prize ever, thank you. It's because it will be faster to do that. You guys will get it, uh, faster, you guys can vote. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> If you want to hear my, my dulcet tones today or not. <laughs> oh, Chuck, I'm glad you had fun. I mean, you know, what's what's the point of me doing this if we're not having fun? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying yeah to music. Alright, I can do so. I did, um, I did prepare a song by, um, Dr. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck also wants the the, the Shannon serenade. All right, so we've gone over by six minutes, but I will do this real quick. So I chose a song because we're still everything is animal themed today. Um, doc, <laughs> it's by Doctor Dog, and it does have other animals in the lyrics. So it's called that old black hole. So you can look that up if you want to. Um, if you want to know what the lyrics are, if you can't understand me, I don't know if anyone can understand me when I sing, but. Okay. Alright, yeah, I just needed, sorry, I need to, like, you know, hear the chords first before I'm confident I'm in the right key. <laughs> I put on my clothes like a bodyguard, I put the dogs on patrol in my own backyard. I don't want to fight, but I'm constantly ready, and I don't rock the boat, but it's always unsteady. There's an elephant in my head, and I tiptoe around it. There are eggshells on the floor, therefore I never touch the ground. It's like that old black hole. No matter how you try, you set out each day, never to arrive. I've got my eyes on the prize, but it looks just like a mystery. It all goes by on the lonesome trail to victory. I'm drawing in the blinds. I got my horn for walls, man. The show really starts 
once the curtain falls Take that thorn from my side Fix this chip on my shoulder Time is racing with the clock And I ain't getting any older It's like that old black hole No matter how you try It's like that old black hole No matter how you try It's like that old black hole No matter how you try Put on my finest dress and I wrap up my body tight with the sun in my eyes. I step into the night like a mystery in the dark. Oh, it's just another kind of light. I don't expect you to believe me, but everything is alright. I don't make rules for a living, I don't do tricks for a dime. I was born on a good day. Death, dumb and blind, who am I to tell the truth? Oh, I don't even know what it is. Well, I don't know how to say it, but I'm sure that I can show you. Well, I don't know how to say it, but I know that I can show you. I tie my boots up tight and should fade to bed. There's a pistol and a crystal underneath my pillow. There's a tender heart inside that ugly armadillo. The weeping willows There's a spirit in the air And there ain't no way around it I was not prepared to move it all The moment that I found it It's like that old black hole No matter how you try It's like that old black hole No matter how you try It's like that old black hole No matter how you try You said I hold each day Never to arrive So that's it for me today. Um, I hope to see you all at the first Friday tonight. So that's at 6.30. Um, yeah, it's been really fun. Congratulations to our winner, Emra. I swear I didn't, um, <laughs> I didn't feed her the answers beforehand. <laughs> oh man, that would have been wild. Um, but anyway... Well, now I definitely everyone's going to think I did. Uh, <laughs> Chuck, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'll see you next week. Bye, Megan. Bye, Emma. Uh, Jay-Z already left. <laughs> Bye, Karen. Uh, bu oh, Leslie also left. So, yeah, it's just us. So, I hope everyone uh, stays safe uh, and sane. <laughs> um, and I will see you all next week um oh also just as a <laughs> just also um to just to state uh we are thinking of moving the time to four o'clock so we uh watch out for the email to see what time we're gonna be at uh next week so it might be four uh, <laughs> so bye everyone have a good weekend i'll see you next week <laughs>